elected official, the Green Party, to stand here to really encourage the legislature, both Democrats and Republicans, to come together and do what's right, to once and for all recognize same-sex couples, allow them the freedom to marry. Uh, we encourage people throughout the state in the next two months to contact their legislators to make sure that they understand that the message that was sent last November was a message affirming the right for same-sex couples to enjoy the same freedom that so many of us who are married now do. That's what this really is about. And it's my honor to be joined by, by uh, Matt Lewis from the Independence Party and Cam Gordon from the Green Party and, of course, Bob Auden from the Libertarian Party. The log cabin Republicans, who also were very instrumental in the defeat of the amendment last year, wanted to be here today. They also are very supportive of making sure that this legislative session we pass marriage equality. So with that, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Matt Lewis to say a few things, and then we can come back for questions later. Matt? Thanks, Cal. Uh, I'm Matt Lewis, and I'm the Communications Director and an Executive Committee member of the Independence Party of Minnesota. Uh, the state platform of our party uh, supports an inclusive society and embraces diversity, but explicitly opposes discriminating upon so, uh, sexual orientation. Same-sex couples in our state participate in the civic and business culture in equal measure to their peers. They work hard and contribute, uh, contribute equally, and they should be treated equally in the eyes of the law. Uh, a year ago, the delegates of our party voted nearly unanimously to oppose the marriage amendment, and I had the pleasure to serve on the board of that organization with two of the gentlemen up here today. Um, and we did that because freedom means freedom for everyone in our state. And while there's no doubt that our delegates are continuing to have this conversation, um, and we'll have it when we meet as a body this year, our executive committee had this conversation just this weekend uh, because it was in, we felt it was important to make clear that we don't believe in freedom for just some Minnesotans, but freedom for everyone. Uh, we believe firmly in religious freedom, and this is a bill that expands that religious freedom to ensure that no religious institution should be forced to violate its convictions, and that was critically important to us. There's a number of tough issues that need to be addressed and solved um, just across the street this year, uh, and the Independence Party will continue to be vocal advocates for many of those issues that affect the well-being of our state and its citizens. When I brought this forward to our executive committee just this weekend, I borrowed the words of Adam Arling, one of our bright, young, active IP members whose own freedom uh, in this regard is currently limited in the state. And while I recognize and our party recognizes that the polling from around the nation is showing a majority of independents supporting the freedom to marry, that's not what we discussed as a party as being the most important. I'll turn it over to my colleague Cam Gordon from the Green Party. Thank you very much, and I'm uh, delighted to be here. Uh, my name is Cam Gordon. I'm a former Green Party State Party Chair, and I now uh, am an endorsed Green Party candidate on the Minneapolis City Council. Um, and I'm just delighted to be here standing with uh, uh, my brothers, I guess in this case, from the other parties. And I know that uh, there's Republican brothers and sisters who stand with us too. And what that tells me is that we're reaching a consensus in Minnesota, that we're moving forward on this. I think that campaign that we uh, ran and, and the decision that we made about the constitutional amendment was an important step. But now it's time for us to move forward and cross that finish line and, and say that discrimination based on sexual orientation isn't something something we want in our Minnesota in the future. Um, by seeing uh, us up here, I think, and all the people that, that we represent and stand for, it shows that the people of Minnesota want to see this change come forward now. The Greens have uh, stood for marriage equality uh, since our founding. Uh, we believe in social justice for all, um, fairness, and I think that the people of Minnesota believe in those things too. And it's time that we uh, get over this last hurdle and we uh, move Minnesota forward into the future. I think that's what, what people want. It's a difficult time. It's a difficult decision. I recognize that. But if we all stand together and do it together, I think um, when we're done, we're going to realize we made the right decision. And this time we got it right. I appreciate that. And I uh, now want to turn it over to uh, uh, Bob Hutton from the Libertarian Party. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm Bob Auden, the chair of the Libertarian Party of Minnesota. Uh, I've been a libertarian all my life. As you might guess from the word libertarian, libertarians believe in liberty. Uh, liberty is the exercise of freedom that doesn't impinge upon the rights of others. Uh, freedom is the ability of individuals to interact with one another without government interference. All rights are based on property ownership. If you own nothing else, you own yourself. Rights do not come from government, but they come from the ownership of property. Government exists to protect our rights and our property, not to limit our rights or take them away. Now, how does this fit with freedom to marry uh, same-sex couples? Well, libertarians believe that you cannot legislate morality, and furthermore, that government shouldn't be in the business of telling churches who they can and cannot marry. Civil marriage, as far as government is concerned, should be a commitment and agreement between two people who want to share their lives. Now, what would libertarians like to see? Well, the state of Minnesota shall recognize all marriages performed by religious institutions or arranged as private agreements between two individuals when signed in writing to this effect in the presence of witnesses for purposes of determining inheritance, child custody decisions by probate court, uh, visitation rights by spouses at state-run hospitals, and all other legal purposes in lieu of a marriage license. Uh, until we can get government out of marriage, libertarians believe that legalizing freedom to marry for the same-sex couple is the fair thing to do. I want to thank uh, Minnesotans United uh, for leading the charge on this issue. Therefore, I encourage our Minnesota legislature to pass this as a standalone bill and allow marriages of same-sex couples to be performed in the state of Minnesota. I further encourage the Minnesota to recognize these same marriages from other states. After all, again, what is marriage but simply a private agreement between two individuals that share their lives? Thank you. You know, just in closing, before we open it up for questions, what I, I think what Bob just said about Minnesotans United, the reality that this organization from day one, a year and a half ago, uh, brought forward a coalition of people from all political parties, from every ideological spectrum to come together because this is not a partisan issue. This is not a partisan issue. This is about what kind of state we want for the future. What kind of statement do we want to make when we say that a whole swath of our society are treated like second-class citizens? We know that the freedom to marry is a critical step to building a better Minnesota. And for all of us, that's what we hope comes out of this legislative session. That the narrative is that whether you're straight, you're gay, you're old, you're young, you live in greater Minnesota, you live in the metro area, that what the legislature did was help all Minnesotans, not just a few. And so we're here today to stand in unison to urge legislators of both parties to come together and do what is right and pass the freedom to marry for all Minnesotans. We'll open it up for questions. And you say it's not a partisan issue, but it looks likely that this is going to have to be passed almost entirely with, with Democratic votes if it's to happen. Is that is it still worth doing? And do you think uh, any of your lawmakers face political consequences for that? Well, you know, Martin Luther King once said that it's always the right time to do the right thing. It's always the right time to do the right thing. And so I think we can sit and try to predict what the elections are going to look like next year. And I'm sure there's some legislators that are doing that. But I think what, what's really going on right now, Pat, for legislators in my party who are having a tough time with this issue, is they're trying to reconcile the constituents and some who are opposed to the idea uh, in some cases, they're trying to reconcile maybe the, their faith, reconcile their own personal beliefs on this, with the reality that this is the right thing to do. And so I think there are some making political calculations, and that's understandable. That's politics. That's nature. Our hope is that people will do the right thing here, because this is not a political issue 
and it's certainly not a partisan issue. Anyone else want to answer that? Jim? Yeah. Why don't you introduce Good afternoon. Yourself? Yes, my name is Judge Jim Gray. I'm from California. I was the Libertarian candidate for vice president in this past election, along with Governor Gary Johnson as candidate for president. I'm actually in town tomorrow to be at the university at the law school to talk in a drug policy forum. And actually was brought over today to speak on a medical marijuana issue. But I heard that you were here on this really important issue for us all of marriage equality. And uh, we just simply believe as libertarians, uh, like we were hearing, that a person, an adult, should be able to choose how to live his or her life. And if you're really going to look at this from a constitutional perspective, this is the same step that we first took with regard to racial equality, and then it was next gender equality, and the next logical step, of course, is marriage equality. So this is a constitutional 14th Amendment issue, and I just wanted to lend my voice to it. Thank you. And are you willing to, I mean, with these conversations with legislators, and I'm sure you're familiar with those legislators in your own party are wrestling with this, and I'm sure they're, you know, whatever their personal feelings are, they're afraid in some districts, particularly when you look at the, the, the results of the marriage amendment, um, what protections or what help are you offering them as, as they think about making well, the same help we offer to any of our incumbents, right? Uh, you know, we're not talking to people and say, if you vote, this way, we're going to offer you some more protection than someone that doesn't vote that way. What we're saying is that, you know, this is not as politically explosive of an issue as people might imagine. The polls, if you've looked at the polls over the last several months, the majority of Americans now support full marriage equality. You're seeing a trend line in this state going that direction as well. We know overwhelmingly the, the message that was sent last fall was that people expect uh, uh, members of the LGBT community to be treated not only uh, fairly but also equally and that at the end of the day I think we as Democrats if I just put it in a partisan standpoint I think we actually win on this issue uh, because the reality is is that as, as I think Cam said our party here the DFL has stood for marriage equality for many, many, many years. We've had it in our platform. And just this last year the, at the Democratic National uh, Convention, we put it in our national party platform. We believe strongly that this is uh, a huge issue. It's the issue of our time. And we need to stand up and fight for that. And so, look. I'm not, uh, I think I've mentioned this to you before, Baird. I don't come up to the Capitol much. I don't spend a lot of time up here trying to tell legislators what to do. That's not my job. There's past party chairs who've done that unsuccessfully. My job is to help get them elected. And when I do talk to them about important policy issues, it's to let them know that from a political campaign perspective, I don't think this is a loser. I actually think it's a winner. And it's a winner because we're standing up and doing the right thing. You know, Paul Wellstone, who I work for, used to say this all the time, if you stand up and do the right thing, people will uh, give you the benefit of the doubt instead of playing games with it. And so I fully respect legislators who are grappling with this, uh, who are having a tough time coming to uh, uh, grips on which way they're going to vote. I'm not going to pressure them, but I'm going to ask them to consider, again, uh, what kind of statement they can make about the future of this state by doing the right thing right now. Many people come up to this building and worry right away about their own self-preservation. We are at a moment in time in our history, in this state and in this country, when it's not about just getting reelected. It's about doing the right thing. And if the chips fall and that they're, 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 they're uh, such that they're, they're uh, um, kicked out of office because of this vote, people in their party that, you know, this is not a games with this. It's time to stand up and do what is right. So, so and I just wanted to add. We run a lot of people for legislative office, but the
that will get excited and will recognize somebody who's taken a tough vote and will be there. And they'll be seen as a hero. They'll be seen as someone who stood up for the right thing. And I think they'll be surprised that they'll get help if they're in a, a district and if they're worried about it, there will be help and there will be people who will rally around them for that uh, to make the case with them to the voters of how it was the right decision. So I would ex fully expect that, especially in some of those toughest areas. And, um, and I'm, I'm very hopeful that people from both parties are going to step forward and, and vote in favor of this. And let me just add one very specific partisan uh, strategic viewpoint here. 2010, going into that election, the DFL pace, uh, base was disillusioned. They were mad, they were angry, they were frustrated that Democrats in Washington didn't stand up and fight for something. And our base didn't turn out. They stayed home. We lost both majorities because of that, right? Now, I support marriage equality because it's the right thing to do. But politically, it's also the right thing to do because our party came out overwhelmingly, the DFL party in 2012, and said, we do not want discrimination in our Constitution, and we want to recognize same-sex couples and their right and their freedom to marry, just like everyone else. Representative Clark is here joining us, the uh, author of the bill in the House. Do you want to say a few words? Thank you. Just very brief. I just heard about this wonderful gathering, and I wanted to come and express my solidarity and let you know that we're all in this together. Uh, yes. Can you say what it <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> I will say that, um, again, uh, for those folks who are concerned, uh, Democrats in, our, in, in, in the DFL and, and other elected officials, that voting for marriage equality is a political liability, um, our polling doesn't bear that out. And I'll just leave it at that. Ken, um, does your presence at the press conference, does it suggest that you're worried that you might not have the Democratic votes to pass this? No, I'm not worried about that. You know, I, I think, you know, again, I, I, all of you know there are Democrats, DFLers, who are grappling with this issue, rightfully so. And, you know, we're not here, none of us are here to twist anyone's arms. We want people to know the facts as they are. We want people to feel comfortable standing up and voting their conscience doing the right thing. And um, no, I don't think it's in trouble at all. We're here to say in the next two months, when there's a focus on the budget and other important issues, that the narrative we want created coming out of this session is a narrative of helping all people. Uh, again, not just gay people, not straight people, young people, old people, people throughout the state. Um, you know, there's an old saying that a rising tide should lift all boats. That's really truly what we want out of this session is a session that improves the lives of all Minnesotans. And so I think we can create that session by passing a, 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 a great budget, um, passing a bonding bill, um, coming together, investing in education and transportation and, and our infrastructure, and, and improving the lives of those in the LGBT community by finally recognizing their freedom to marry. So that's the narrative that I'm, I, I'm hopeful we create. And if we create that narrative, and I think this was the mistake of the Republican Party in 2010, the mistake they made was when they put this amendment on the ballot, they didn't do anything else. That's it. That was their legacy, right? So, you know, when people say, well, you, you, you can't take this up, no. We take this up because it's part of our mission as DFLers. It's part of our values. When we talk about improving li people's lives, we're talking about improving everyone's lives. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, a Green, an Independent, a Libertarian, all people's lives. That's what this is about. And it's so uh, not only symbolic but impressive that the parties have come together in this way. And there are Republicans, as Cam mentioned, there are Republicans out there who support this. And there are Republican legislators who are considering supporting this, right? We just need to remind them that it's okay to stand up and do the right thing. That's what we're here today to say. So, any other questions? How does, how does each party feel about the civil union uh, idea that was introduced last year? 
Well, what we want, uh, what the Greens want is they want justice and equality, and it seems like this is a, a red herring and a distraction, and that's not what people really want. I think we want um, everybody to have the same rights, and if, if they want to be able to express their love and their commitment uh, to somebody else, uh, whatever the gender, um, through a marriage, they should be able to do that, um, just the same as uh, different sex couples. It's not only fundamentally unfair and unequal to have a civil union, but also from a practical standpoint, it's just simply wrong that we have something in the order of 1,100 line items in federal and state laws around the country that say you can have some benefits if you are, quote, married, uh, but you do not have benefits if you're not married. So you can go through and change all of those 1,100 bills, or you can actually do the right thing and allow uh, any consenting adults to marry uh, without that label. It's fundamental fairness. Um, I don't doubt the motivations and the sincerity of people that support that option, but um, it, was, it was our opinion as a body of uh, the executive committee that you can't compromise freedom. Um, and I think it's a testament to our state that we have party, uh, diverse parties like this, rich parties, parties that are strong, like a Libertarian Party in Minnesota, parties like mine that can get a quarter million votes in a statewide race. And I think that shows that Minnesotans are, are hungry for authenticity and leadership. And uh, I think that's what you're seeing today. You're not going to see um, waffling or, or political calculations drive this. You're going to see principles drive it. And principle that freedom means freedom for everyone is uh, what we're going to stand on. I, I would just say that you, you, you can't have this idea that you can be separate and equal. Right, separate but equal, this idea that we can give uh, folks the same rights except marriage. Because what you're saying is that you're good enough to get this, but you're not good enough to get this, which is essentially saying you're a second class citizen. Why would we enshrine through the Civil Unions Bill this notion that Many Minnesotans are second-class citizens, that they're worthy of many of those benefits, but not marriage. It's not right. I know it's an easy way out. It's an easy way out for some legislators. But that's not the right way out. The right way to do this is to recognize equality, full equality. And uh, so, you know, I'm disappointed. Disappointed with Democrats. And I'm disappointed with Republicans who introduced that bill. And, you know, I, uh, I've expressed my disappointment to those in my party. Uh, again, I'm not going to twist arms, but I'm disappointed. And I'm hopeful, I'm very hopeful that folks will come around and recognize uh, that this is nothing more than what Matt said and others said is a, a red herring to throw people off of what is truly at stake here. Bob, did you want to add anything? I just, uh, <clears throat> libertarians believe that a lot of the problems that we experience in this country are caused by our government. And we'd like to see our government out of a lot of things, uh, including marriage. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, how are you, Judge? Great to see you. Thanks for being here. Yeah. 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 Thanks for coming down. Really appreciate it.